The Law of Abundance A universal natural law is abundance. We can see clear evidence of this law on every hand. Nature is excessive, wasteful, and opulent everywhere. Economy cannot be seen in any made item everywhere. The abundance with which nature has provided for man is demonstrated by the millions of trees, flowers, plants, and animals, as well as the huge system of reproduction where the process of creation and recreation is perpetually in motion. It is clear that there is enough for everyone. But it is also clear that many people appear to have been cut off from this supply. This is because they have not yet realized how universal all matter is and how the mind is the driving force behind the relationships that connect us to the things we want. Understanding specific scientific principles of mind action is necessary to regulate events. Such information is quite important. It can be acquired gradually and applied just as quickly as knowledge. One of its fruits is the ability to influence events, and its balance sheet includes assets like harmony, health, and prosperity. Harvesting its abundant riches simply requires labor. Power is the source of all wealth. Assets only have worth when they offer power. Events only have meaning when they have an impact on power. Everything else just represents different types and levels of power. A major turning point in human development was the discovery of a rule of law through which this power could be made available for all human endeavors. It is the line that separates superstition from intelligence. It substituted absolute, unchangeable universal rule for the element of caprice that existed in men's lives. Man is able to plan bravely and act confidently because of his understanding of cause and effect, which is demonstrated by the laws governing steam, electricity, chemical affinity, and gravitation because they control the physical universe. These laws are referred to as natural laws. However, not all strength is physical. Some power is mental, while others are moral and spiritual. A guy who lived 50 or even 25 years ago would find it impossible to fathom the society we live in today. Thought is the vital force or energy that is being created, and that has generated such stunning outcomes in the previous 50 years. What can't be anticipated in another 50 years if such accomplishments have been achieved by assembling these cerebral powerhouses in the past 50? Some may question why we are not demonstrating these principles if they are true. Because the underlying concept is unquestionably true, why are we not getting the expected outcomes? We do. We receive outcomes that are exactly in line with how well we comprehend the law and how well we can apply it. The laws governing electricity were not effective until someone created them and demonstrated how to use them. The ether, the substance from which all things emerge, begins to vibrate in response to mental action. These vibrations in turn cause a correspondingly larger vibration in the molecule, and eventually mechanical action is created. This changes the way we interact with our surroundings and creates previously unimaginable opportunities. This is made possible by an ordered system of law that is inextricably linked to our new way of thinking. Therefore, it is obvious that ideas of riches will only react to other thoughts that are comparable. The individual's wealth is perceived to be what he inherently is. The key to attracting wealth from without is revealed to be opulence within. It has been determined that an individual's true source of wealth is their capacity to generate. Because of this, Whomever puts their heart into their work will unquestionably succeed in all endeavors. He is going to give and keep giving, and the more he gives, the more he will get. The power of thought activates the law of attraction, which eventually presents itself abundantly in men's lives. The secret to all success and failure is also found within. It is where all strength and weakness originate. All development comes from within. Every plant, every animal, and every human are living examples of this law, and it has been historically incorrect to seek strength or power from other sources. The development of that mental state that nurtures and unfolds a creative thought that would bring about miraculous transformations in life is facilitated by a deep comprehension of this fundamental law that permeates the universe. Your road will be littered with golden opportunities, and you'll have the strength and insight to seize them. You'll make unforeseen friends, 
the world will shift to fit your new circumstances, and you'll have discovered the pearl of greatest price. Every positive quality, wisdom, strength, courage, comes from power, and we have seen that all power comes from inside. Conversely, every negative quality, lack, limitation, bad circumstance, comes from weakness, which is just the absence of force. It is nothing, and it comes from nowhere. Therefore, developing power is the only cure. This is the secret by which many people transform loss into gain, fear into courage, hope into reality, and despair into joy. This might seem too good to be true, but keep in mind that science has given man access to nearly endless resources in only a few short years with the push of a button or the pull of a lever. Is it not possible that there are further laws with even more potential outcomes? Let's examine some of nature's most potent rules. In the world of minerals, everything is permanent and solid. The animal and plant kingdoms are constantly evolving, changing, and being formed and recreated. Heat, light, and energy are all present in the atmosphere. As we move from the visible to the invisible, from the coarse to the fine, and from the low potentiality to the high potentiality, each realm gets finer and more spiritual. When we approach the invisible, energy is in its most pure and flammable form. The invisible forces of nature are the most potent powers. Similarly, the invisible spiritual forces of man are the most potent forces. And the only way for the spiritual forces to appear is via the act of thinking. The only ability the spirit possesses is thinking, and thought is the only output of thinking. As a result, reasoning is a spiritual process, ideas are spiritual conceptions, questions are spiritual searchlights, and logic, argument, and philosophy are components of the spiritual apparatus. Addition and subtraction are also spiritual operations. Every thought activates certain bodily tissues, brain regions, nerves, or muscles. The structure of the tissue is changed physically as a result. Therefore, in order to completely alter a man's bodily organization, only a specific number of thoughts on a particular topic are required. This is how failure is transformed into success. Thoughts of failure, despair, lack, limitation, and disharmony are replaced with thoughts of courage, power, inspiration, and harmony. As a result, the physical tissue is altered and the person develops a new perspective on life. In fact, old things have died. The world has changed completely. He is reborn, but this time he is a spirit-born child. For him, life now has a new purpose. He has been rebuilt and is brimming with happiness, assurance, hope, and vigor. He now recognizes success prospects to which he had previously been blind. He now sees options that were previously meaningless to him. By simply exercising his mind, a man can alter not only himself, but also his surroundings, conditions, and circumstances. The thoughts of success with which he is imbued radiate to those around him, and they in turn assist him in moving forward and upward. He also attracts new and successful associates, which changes his environment. You'll notice, you have to notice, that a fresh day is just beginning. That there are so many amazing, fascinating, and unending possibilities that they are nearly mind-boggling. A full army armed with the weapons of war in use at the time could have been destroyed a century ago by any individual with an airplane or even a Gatling rifle. So it is right now. Any man who is aware of the potential of contemporary metaphysics has an incredible advantage over the masses. The law of attraction is used by the creative mind. We are not to attempt to persuade others to act in accordance with our beliefs. Without the freedom of individual choice, we would be working according to the law of force, which is destructive by nature and the exact opposite of the law of attraction. A little thought will persuade you that the law of attraction is the underlying principle and that all the great natural laws operate silently. Only violent processes, like earthquakes and natural disasters, use force. Nothing worthwhile is ever achieved in that manner. In order to be successful, focus must always be placed on the creative level and never on competition. 
You want to make something for yourself and are completely willing for everyone else to have it as well. You have no desire to take anything from anyone else. You are aware that there is plenty for everyone and that it is not necessary to take from one person in order to give to another. Nature is an endless source of riches, and if there appears to be a shortage someplace, it is only because the means of distribution are still insufficient. Recognition of the law of abundance is a prerequisite for abundance. Not only is mind the creator of everything, but it is also the only creator. Without first being aware that it is possible and putting forth the necessary effort, nothing can unquestionably be created. The amount of electricity in the globe hasn't changed in 50 years, but until someone understood the law by which it might be put to use, we weren't able to benefit from it. Since the law has been understood, it essentially sheds light on the entire world. The same is true of the law of abundance. Only those who understand it and live in accordance with it are able to profit from it. The development of certain mental and moral traits, such as courage, loyalty, tact, sagacity, individuality, and constructiveness, is facilitated by an understanding of the law of abundance. These are all different types of thought, and because all thought is creative, it manifests in the world in ways that are related to how we think. This must be the case because a person's capacity for thought determines his capacity to influence the universal mind and bring about its manifestation. It is the procedure by which the person turns into a conduit for the universal's differentiation. Every action has a cause, just as every state has a consequence. This idea gives the person seemingly transcendental possibilities, one of which is the ability to control circumstances by creating and seizing opportunities. This opportunity's formation presupposes the existence or development of the requisite traits or abilities that act as thought forces and produce a sense of power that current events are powerless to sway. The responsive harmonic activity that connects us to the goals and objects we pursue is made up of this organization of victory or success within the mind, this awareness of our own strength. The law of attraction is this. Since this legislation belongs to everyone, anyone who has enough knowledge of how it works can use it. The love of mental confrontation is a manifestation of the power of the intellect, which is courage. It is a high and honorable sentiment. It is equally suited for both leading and following. Both require guts. It frequently has a tendency to hide. There are men and women who appear to exist solely to please others, but when the time comes and the latent will is revealed, we find that there is, without a doubt, an iron hand and a velvet glove below. True courage is never foolish, argumentative, bad-tempered, or combative. Rather, it is serene, quiet, and collected. The ability to save and retain a portion of the supply that we are always receiving allows us to take advantage of the bigger possibilities that will present themselves once we are prepared for them. Hasn't the phrase to him that hath shall be given been said? All successful businessmen have a strong grasp of this trait. The late James J. Hill, who left behind an estate worth over $52 million, once said, If you want to know whether you are destined to be a success or failure in life, you can easily find out. The test is simple, and it is infallible. Are you able to save money? If not, drop out. You will lose. You may think not, but you will lose as sure as you live. The seed of success is not in you. This is excellent advice up to a point. First of all, he had nothing to work with. To visualize the massive train that he envisioned running through the western grasslands, he had to utilize his imagination. Then, in order to give the means and techniques for making the law of abundance materialize, he had to come to a recognition of it. He would never have had anything to save if he hadn't followed the instructions in this application. The Accumulation of Momentum It just takes a short while for the action and reaction to build up an irresistible momentum, because the more you accumulate, the more you crave, and the more you desire, the more you accumulate. However, it must never be confused with egotism, frugalness, or penury. They are perverts and will prevent any real advancement. The mind's creative instinct is its capacity for construction. Every successful businessman needs to be able to plan, 
create or build, as is obvious. It is not enough to follow the crowd, or as it is known in the business world, initiative. New concepts and procedures must be created. It takes the form of construction, design, planning, invention, research, and improvement. It is a very valuable quality that needs to be regularly improved because he is a center of consciousness in that limitless, eternal energy that all things flow from. Every person has it to some extent. Water can appear as ice water or steam on any of the three manifest planes. The compounds are all the same. Only the temperature is different, but no one would try to run an engine on ice, turn it into steam, and it can easily handle the load. In order for your energy to act on the created plane, you must first melt the ice with the fire of your imagination. The more ice you melt and the stronger the fire, the more potent your thought will be, and the simpler it will be for you to manifest your desire. The capacity to recognize and adhere to natural law is sagacity. It is the result of that profound understanding that enables one to go into the core of things and comprehend how to set causes into action that will inevitably generate successful conditions. True sagacity avoids trickery and deceit as it would leprosy. The use of tact is a very subtle yet crucial component of successful commercial operations. It closely resembles intuition. One must have a keen sense of judgment and the ability to decide on their own what to say or do in order to be tactful. Tact permits one to foresee what is about to happen and assess the outcome of acts. To be tactful, one must possess sympathy and understanding, the comprehension that is so uncommon for all men see, hear, and feel, but how pathetically few understand. Since these qualities are now inevitably required as the price of success, tact allows us to recognize them when they are there. One of the strongest threads that bind persons of character and strength is loyalty. It is a rule that can never be flouted without consequence. A person would never run out of friends if he would sooner lose his right hand than betray a buddy. The guy will discover himself connected with a cosmic power that will only draw favorable circumstances if he stands in silent watch beside the shrine of confidence or friendship of those who permitted him to enter, even to the point of death if necessary. It is impossible for such a person to experience any form of lack. Individuality is the capacity to realize our own untapped potential to live by our own rules, and to be more concerned with the race than the end result. Strong men don't give a damn about the herd of copycats that trots along behind them with complacency. They find no joy in merely organizing enormous crowds or winning the approval of the crowd. This appeals exclusively to small-minded people with little intelligence. The power within manifesting itself exalts individuality more than the servility of the weak. The ability to develop and express one's individuality, a true strength that is inherently present in everyone, allows one to take on the responsibility of choosing his own path rather than following some self-assured beacon. Inspiration is the art of taking in, the art of self-realization, the art of adjusting one's mind to the universal mind, the art of attaching the right mechanism to the source of all power, the art of transforming the formless into form, the art of becoming a conduit for the flow of infinite wisdom, the art of visualizing perfection, and the art of realizing the omnipresence of omnipotence. The necessary precondition for all happiness is truth. There is no other satisfaction like the satisfaction of knowing the truth and standing firmly in it. Truth is the fundamental reality and the precondition for any productive economic venture or interpersonal relationship. While the humblest mind can accurately predict the outcome of every right action, the greatest, most profound, and most penetrating mind loses its way hopelessly and can form no conception of the result due to a departure from right principles. Therefore, every action that is not in harmony with truth, whether through ignorance or design, cuts the ground from under our feet, leads to discord, inevitable loss, and confusion. It only remains for people to occasionally perform the actions that the freshly awakened thinking force will guide once they have developed within themselves the necessary components of actual success. This is where the magical secret of all power lies. Less than 10% of our brain activities are conscious. 
The remaining 90% are subconscious and unconscious. Therefore, a person who relies solely on conscious cognition is only 10% as effective. Those that have access to this larger reservoir of mental richness are the ones who are making worthwhile progress. Great truths are concealed in the vast territory of the subconscious mind, and it is in this place that thought discovers its creative power, the capacity to correlate with its object and make the invisible visible. The idea that electricity must constantly move from a higher to a lower potentiality is well known to those who are familiar with the laws of electricity. As a result, they are free to apply the power however they see fit. Those who are unfamiliar with this law, as well as the laws governing the mental world, are powerless to change anything. The law can be used by those who comprehend that mind permeates everything, is ubiquitous, and is receptive to every demand. Uneducated people cannot use the law since they do not grasp it. The results of this knowledge are like a divine gift. The truth is what sets men free. Free from sadness, anxiety, and care, in addition to being devoid of every deficiency and restriction. Is it not amazing to understand that this law does not regard individuals, that it is irrelevant what your thought patterns may be, and that the path has been prepared? It will become clear that this mental power is the greatest fact in the world, the cure for every ailment, the answer to every problem, and the fulfillment of every desire. Once it is realized that it controls and directs every other power that exists, that it can be developed and nurtured, and that there is no restriction that can be placed on its activity. In actuality, it is the glorious gift of the Creator for the liberation of mankind.